Hi, this is Ibarian X from The Candid Frame. When you are out on the street photographing, one of the things you'll encounter a lot are very busy scenes. Sometimes scenes that are bordering on the, on the chaotic. There's so much going on that it can be hard to try and focus on how to build a composition that, that actually works. And I've made shots like this. I, I see a scene and I sort of absently make a photograph hoping that I make a, a, a good shot from it. But I've learned, if anything, that you really just need to, to sort of pay attention and to sort of take the scene apart and sort of build it back together and decide not only what you keep in the frame and what you, exclu and what you exclude, but also what is going to serve as an anchor in the shot, which is what I want to talk about today. All right, here we have a shot by David Hufford. This was shot with a Fujifilm X-E1 at 250th of a second at F9 ISO 400. Now, this is kind of a typical scene that we as street photographers often encounter. We come to a street scene where there may not be a lot of human activity, but there's something about the scene that appeals to us. Um, this scene... Uh, provides a, a nice sense of place uh, for this town in, in Tokyo. And when you're traveling uh, and you're on vacation, you're, you're likely to document a lot of photographs just like this because you just want to document the place that where you were. And there's a lot of busyness here. There may not be a lot of human activity, but there are a lot of things here to pull your eye's attention. There's, of course, the signage, there's the architecture, there's the light, there's the repeating pattern as you move down the street off into the distance, into the actual ground itself, the pattern of those of those sort of tiles that, that the woman is walking on. Uh, there are a few people that are in the scene. And when you're making a photograph like this, the idea is the scene itself isn't especially dramatic. There isn't anything really, you know, attention-grabbing happening. So how do you make a shot like this interesting? And the tendency for, for a lot of us is we'll just make a photograph of the scene, not really paying attention as to whether or not the, the, the frame itself is going to be an effective shot. And if you take this woman out of the picture, it's just a picture of a, of a street. Um, it's, the light is really interesting, and with the black and white conversion, we have some interesting tones, and we have some great patterns and light and shadow, all of those things. But what makes the shot, well, what elevates the shot from just being another sort of boring shot of a street scene is the is the presence of of the woman, and in this in this case, the woman serves as that anchor, as the the starting point from which we explore the image. Now, the reason why your eye is drawn to her is because she is the most contrasty element within the frame. You know, we have her dark clothing, her dark shoes, her dark hair, and when, then we have this sort of light area around her. So our eyes immediately uh, go to her. And uh, because this area is also sort of the brightest element of the frame, our eyes are sort of led there, and she's present there, and that contrast helps helps to draw our eye to that to that moment and then you have the added benefit of having that nice shadow here uh, on the sidewalk here that helps to take this negative space and, and keep it from being too uh, too distracting I mean we have this wonderful pattern here but the shadow is really sort of important but she serves as the starting point for us exploring the frame and we kind of naturally because she's moving from right to left sort of move in this direction and we see these elements here but then we're pulled over here to the right, and then we just kind of flow in a nice circular pattern, pattern back, uh, back to her in the scene. And you know, this this idea of having an anchor, having a starting point, is always really important. Even even for shots where you're not necessarily including people, um, having an anchor, having a place where you want the viewer to look first, is always something to keep in mind when you're making a photograph. Say, for example, you're taking a picture of, of a repeating pattern on a wall. Don't just photograph the pattern. Try to include something in there that breaks up the pattern because that point where the pattern is broken becomes the anchor. It becomes the starting point from which we experience the image. So when you're taking a, a street scene like this, it's always a good idea to not just sort of just document what's there, it's to try to find what is going to serve as your anchor from which you can build 
um, a composition. And with a scene like this, it, it may be just a case of just waiting for something or someone to walk into the scene. Uh, in the distance, you can see what appears to be a scooter. So if this woman hadn't been in the frame, you probably could have waited for some sort of traffic to come into the frame uh, here or somewhere around this, this area uh, to serve as the anchor. So, you know, always keep an eye out for it. And sometimes you may have to practice a, a little patience for it to happen. But in my experience, it always sort of pays off. Okay, here we have a shot by John Clark. Uh, this was shot with a, uh, a Sony um, 7R Mark II, shot at 125th of a second at f4 at ISO 800. So here we're not de dealing with a street scene. We're in a, a little clothing store. And uh, the busyness here is all the clothing that's on the rack and all the price tags and the signage and the color that's there. So imagine again this scene without this woman and and her daughter in, in the frame, right? You would just have this overall scene that's really kind of interesting because it has, has those, those repeating patterns. It, it's a wash in color. Um, the presence of the racks and the signs create these nice sort of uh, lines, graphic lines, uh, leading to a, a vanishing point towards the center of the center of the frame. So graphically, color-wise, uh, it's really interesting. The light isn't particularly great. You're probably dealing with some uh, daylight from where the photographer is standing, from behind where the photographer is standing. But largely, the interior is likely illuminated by, you know, fluorescent fluorescent lights, not the most ideal light. So lighting isn't really sort of the key here, uh, but it's all these other graphic elements that are within the shot. But again, if you imagine this shot without the people there, what would be the anchor? Your eyes would probably wander to the signs and, and the price tag, but you really wouldn't know where you want, where the, the viewer wouldn't know exactly where the photographer wanted them to look first. And that's always something that's really important, whether it's a, a street photograph, a portrait, or a landscape. You have to keep in mind, where do you want the viewer to start experiencing your photograph? And in this case, it's, it's the two human figures in the, in the frame. And thankfully, they're not just standing there. They're, they actually are engaging with each other. Um, it seems like they're having a discussion about this dress uh, that this girl is holding. And I love the expression of the girl's face, the way she's holding the dress, the way her mother is gesturing uh, towards her as if she's going to convince her that, nope, that's not a dress that you're going to be wearing or, or whatever the discussion was. You can feel like they're, they're totally engaged. And the, the fact that she's holding the dress gives you an idea of what they're discussing. I mean, you can see the, the mother holding some other uh, items in her left hand so you know that they're they're shopping. Uh, and But the dress there serves as a really nice... Uh, clue as to what the discussion is about because sometimes you can see people talking on the street and you make a photograph but you don't know exactly what they're talking about or you know you're just sort of left to assume but here it's kind of clear not only because she's holding the dress but because of the space and here uh, the people in that space help to tell a story and having them as an anchor there not only satisfies us in terms of a visual place to start in the photograph, but most importantly, it provides a story. It provides a context for that moment, which is really, um, really, really nice. All right, here we have a shot by Eric Perez. Uh, no EXIF data. Um, this shot is made of multiple fragments. Uh, it's, it's a very chaotic scene initially. Um, we have this silhouette cast by the, the light hitting this fellow over here cast across the screen we have the fellow here we have the neon signage we have this uh, dispenser for uh, for coke and soda we have these people here on the frame there are all these disparate elements that make up this composition that aren't really sort of as clean as some of the other shots that we've we've seen so far it's very um, disjointed but this silhouette provides the anchor. That's the very first place my eye falls on when I take a look at this frame. Uh, there's a lot of red that repeats throughout this frame. I mean, you could, you, this guy seems to be sort of important. The signage is important. The red is important. But having this silhouette here, having that contrast really 
provides a place not only for my eye to fall on in the first place, but to return to as I explore the rest, the rest of the frame. Uh, if the silhouette wasn't there, you would just have this expanse of red. And red is already a, a visual draw, but it would just be a large area of negative space that wasn't doing anything particularly interesting. So though we, we, st we would still likely be drawn to this area just because of that saturated red, I don't think it would be as effective a photograph uh, if it was just that. Having the silhouette, having that outline of this man's, of this man's face and body uh, makes it a much more uh, effective photograph and allows the eye to sort of flow around the frame but return to it, uh, return to it here. Um, you have some sort of busyness here. I, I, this, this image could probably benefit from a slight crop. I don't know if this particular thing and this fellow here is, is especially important. Uh, I kind of took a look at the image if you just cropped it severely and you just included it here, but I kind of like having some of this in, in the frame. Um, so I don't know whether the photographer would consider just doing a slight crop here. Uh, to eliminate some of these things on the far left in the frame that I don't think are, are adding to the shot. The heart of the shot is really what's happening over here. Uh, this stuff here provides a little bit of context, uh, which which I like. I know some people will probably would want to eliminate all this stuff and just crop this area here. But, you know, I, I leave it to the photographer to decide what, what works best uh, best for him. But, but again, th the image is really weighted for this area, and this serves as the anchor. Uh, uh, for me and makes the shot really really effective and you can see as with the other two shots that having a place to start with is really really key I mean if you take a look at some of your photographs that you feel like are kind of lackluster and that aren't working one of the things that's probably lacking is an anchor is a starting point especially if you're photographing on a street where a lot of people are are moving uh, up and down the street uh, where where do you want people to look first? And if you're lock, lacking that uh, in your photograph, it's something you may want to sort of look look for the next time you're out there shooting on the street. So hope that was helpful. Uh, if you're finding the Candid Frame for the first time and you've never heard of us, well, you can visit the Candid Frame at thecandidframe.com and listen to our podcast, which features conversations with photographers from all genres, not not just street photographers, um, but portrait photographers, landscape photographers, wedding photographers, talking about their work and their career and their lives in really interesting ways. A uh, recent photographer we have is Kevin Weinstein, who is a street photographer, but he also is a documentary photographer, a former photojournalist, and uh, an event photographer for celebrity events. And uh, it's a wonderful conversation. I really enjoyed uh, uh, talking with him, and I think you should uh, uh, listen and, and check it out. And one of the best ways to listen to the show is by downloading the Candid Frame app, which is available for free. You can just go to uh, the website here, and we have it for Android, iOS, and Windows, and it's all free. So you can have access to over 359 interviews, uh, literally on the palm of your hand. And if you want to contribute to the Flickr group, all you have to do is go to the Candid Frame, go to Flickr on the Candid Frame, and just ask to be added, and I'll uh, add you. There's, uh, you don't have to pay anything. It's all free, and uh, we have just thousands of people contributing almost uh, 100,000 images to this community so far. So uh, it's it's great uh, taking a look at these photographs and seeing what the community is doing. So check it out. And thanks again for joining me, and I'll I'll see you next time.